Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday, and yes, vintage calculator time. You know I love vintage calculators, and I love HP calculators, and uh, Dana kindly sent this in in the previous uh, mailbag segment, and it is the classic Hewlett-Packard 41 CV calculator, the one, the well, the world's first uh, calculator with an alpha, 14 segment alpha numeric display. It had lots of first keyboard overlays or uh, programmable, keystroke programmable, all sorts of things. Classic calculator and had a very long product uh, lifetime. It came out, first came out in 1979 and was, wasn't discontinued until uh, 1990 or so. so so more than a decade product lifetime for a calculator like this is just phenomenal and it is an absolute classic and we're going to tear it apart and see what's in there. This one's got the uh, four slots. If you're wondering what the uh, model number, uh, well the CV actually means, 41C was the original one and you used to be able to buy a memory expansion pack to go into that but then they released this CV model, the V stands for five of course, Roman numerals and uh, that means that it's got five times the memory of the C model. So this one effectively has that memory expansion uh, box uh, built into it. So here you go, we're going to take this thing apart and it really is very well made and if for those playing along at home here's the uh, serial number and somebody, a uh, HP fan obviously on uh, YouTube, sorry I forget your name, but they said uh, that trans serial number translates to I think the sixth week in 1988 it was manufactured and the S stands for Singapore. So this was manufactured in HP's Singapore factory. Missing a rubber foot there and I love the battery holder like this. Look at that. It's just brilliant. Four uh, N cells in there. Great battery holder. If you've seen the previous video, you know it's got the little uh, levers, uh, sort of little spring. Yeah, there it is inside there to sort of, you know, hold the battery in place properly. Really beautifully designed battery compartment. And one of the interesting things that we're going to take a look at is the use of flat flex cables in there for the battery contacts and also for the expansion module contacts as well. If we take a look down in there, look at that. I mean, that had to be an innovation for its time as well. So this particular one is uh, 26 years old and <laughs> it'll be interesting to take a look inside of it, but you've got to remember, I don't think they... Uh, really updated the design in any uh, major way since 1979 and they would have designed it even before 79 that was when it first came out now unfortunately all of the uh, HP fanboys are having a fit of right about now by me taking off the original rubber feet Unfortunately, we have to do that to get at the four screws, and presumably the four screws will hold it together. It really is uh, quite a solid um, unit, by the way. It really um, feels quite solid. Very lightweight uh, unit. But yeah, there's really, that is quite a rigid case. So I expect there's more than, there might be some um, uh, snap holders around the outside of uh, the case or something like that. That wouldn't surprise me. So let's take the screws out. Of course, the extensive use of flat flex cable in there for those contacts, which was quite remarkable, indicates that this is going to have a high level of uh, technology innovation for its time. I mean, the 14 segment LCD was an innovation in its day. Oh, tiny little screws at the front. And, uh, well, it's uh, going to have uh, uh, almost, or maybe all SMD, although there could be, um, I'm not sure if it's going to be like an all uh, flex PCB, I probably, I, I don't know, it could be with like the main uh, processor, uh, the custom processor mounted on the flat flex, I don't know, but it could very well be a standard, here we go, FR4, yeah, standard FR4, there we go, standard rigid PCB, and, oh, there we go, just some pressure contacts down in there, for the, there's the flat flex up there for the expansion, and uh, it's just relying on the pressure of the case from where the screws are. They strategically put the screws right next to the uh, to, right next to the connector there, so it just uh, 
makes contact with the gold pads down there on the board. So um, that, you know, there's some thought went into that. Obviously they weren't, if they put, say, the screws up here or something like that and just relied on the rigidity of the case to get even pressure contact on those uh, on that flat flex there, then that wouldn't have been, uh, <laughs> you know, very good design at all. But that one's quite nice. They've almost, you know, they've really put some thought into that. We're going, well, these contacts are pretty critical going to these expansion headers. We can't have the case like flexing like I was doing before, you know, it'd be dropped, all these screws come a little bit loose or something like that and uh, have bad contacts. So that's really good putting the two screws there. There's our main. Is that our only device on this whole thing? I doubt it. We'll have to uh, take out the rest of it. Oh, no. I see some dreaded heat stakes there. I don't like the look of those. I hope we don't have to uh, drill or cut out those heat stakes to get into the, the main... Uh, uh, to see the other side of the board, but oh yeah, anyway, um, we've got ourselves a cap here That was um, obviously storing the uh, charge so you replace the battery so you don't lose the contents um, So they've just got a large value cap in there a bit of a bodge going on here. Look at this Check that out Hey, look at that looks like a, they've got a couple of diodes there through hole and They've bodged that wire and they've put some heat shrink over it a little tannel on there little blue tannin going on there and a wire coming over to here that's pretty how you doing and they've yeah they've uh, scraped off the trace there on the PCB so I wonder what that mod actually is is that a factory mod an aftermarket mod I don't think it's a it must be a factory mod because I think those um, feet rubber feet were actually original so yeah that must have been a factory mod huh. Go figure, didn't expect to see that. And you can see the uh, flat flex there, you can see how they've got the gold. That'd be top quality gold, by the way. That wouldn't be, you know, really skimp like they do these days on some products. That'd be really heavily plated uh, gold contacts on there and exposed for the uh, contacts of the module that plugs in the back here. So that one goes onto the main board, as we saw before. And then that's like the uh, edge contacts for the expansion uh, module at the back there. And then right along the edge, there's your battery contacts right in there. So that's, you know, I, I think that's a really nice, elegant way to do it. I, you know, I don't know who would have, uh, you know, thought of this uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the plug-in modules at the back and for the battery holder as well. It really is quite an elegant system to have that sort of all-in-one module like that. So something like that is not the first thing that would spring into a design engineer's mind when you've got to come up with a product like this. I mean, back in the day, we're talking, you know, the late 70s here. This was probably designed in like uh, 78. It came out in 79. So, you know, it would have taken at least a year to get this thing into into production for sure and uh you know back then somebody think well how do we do it you know and we've got ourselves a pcb well you put some you know the first thought would have been to stick some you know right angle uh, module connectors on here or something like that but then they went well no we've got to plug the battery in and well i don't know uh, you know some you know, opt compromises and optimizations later they come up with the idea, well, we've got the flex in there. Well, we're using it for the modules. That's a great idea. We may as well whack the battery contacts in there as well. Brilliant. Curiously, uh, that comes out as a separate, that spacer there comes out as a separate uh, part of the case. Look at that. It even tapers down. Huh, nice. I am quite surprised that they went for just the dicky, you know, hand-soldered, piezo transducer in there that's i don't know why they didn't use spring contacts that that would have been you know completely a wireless um by wireless i don't mean wireless as you get today i.e there's no wires in the thing um d designed to hand wire those you know that in is just sort of ruins the elegance of it really you know the modder side uh, and things like that it just yeah spoils it i think oh, i don't know why they didn't use those springs and i spy a secondary board down there for the lcd obviously these tabs here are holding that uh, lcd 
module in place along there. That's what that uh, part number would be for the on the LCD module itself. Date code, there we go, uh, 47th week 87. So that is uh, confirmed. That's when that module would have been manufactured. And date code on the main uh, chip is very similar as well. So there you go. But look, there's an extra uh, cap soldered down to that board down in there. And there is the processor. And yes, that is uh, HP. Um, marked into there, stamped into there. Awesome. And uh, this is, for those who don't know about the uh, HP uh, calculators, these are basically a, a BCD-based uh, processor, 56-bit uh, register in the HP uh, 41. This processor is the uh, precursor to the uh, Saturn, the famous uh, Saturn architecture, but they're all based on the same sort of architecture going way, way back. And this particular one actually had uh, 14 four bit uh, parts to make up a, a total of a 56 bits for each register and the data was stored in there in uh, BCD format so it could give a in those uh, number of uh, bits four bits per uh, digit you could get a 10 digit mantissa and a two digit uh, exponent now curiously this seems to be the only chip on the board the bottom side seems to be completely devoted to the uh, keypad overlay so I think everything is within this tiny little uh, quad flat pack this custom quad flat pack so I can only presume that the uh, CV model actually integrated the extra uh, five times the number of registers into the particular chip they actually respun the uh, ASIC itself for the CV model over the standard uh, C model. I wasn't expecting that. I thought it had the same process and they would have had the separate uh, memory chips on the board, but no, clearly not. An interesting point to note is that they've got one little tiny pin on each side there, not on this side, but on either side here, actually uh, chopped out. And uh, that almost looks like it's uh, a hand drag soldered job actually rather than uh, reflow it does not look like a reflowed solder joint at all if i really get in there if i really get in there you can see how the solder is sort of pardon the pun dragged up at the end there so it's almost as if somebody's wiped the iron across there and these are like hand done and of course there's no um solder mask between uh pads on there so yeah i guess you had to be a little bit careful so that's interesting, especially in uh, 1988. And you'll notice that around the board, we've got some uh, square test pads there. They're just scattered around various points. Obviously, that's for some sort of uh, bed of nails uh, production tester there. So, yeah, these would have been, uh, uh, you know, sat upside down in on a uh, bed of nails and uh, factory tested in some way to exercise the processor and make sure, you know, the display works and everything else. Now, unfortunately, to get uh, further into this thing, yep, I mean, I can't lift that board out there. This is classic uh, calculator construction where they use all these little heat stakes here. They're actually molded into the main case. They poke up through the board and then they come along and they uh, heat seal uh, the tops here or they cap the uh, tops on them so that's actually holding down the board and you might be asking well why so many spread over that grid well to get of course the rigidity in your keys because you know that uh, classic HP you know clicky uh, key feel of course they have to get that just right and there's actually quite a bit of art that goes into getting that HP calculator feel and they needed that many heat stakes all spread around here to get the rigidity they required in the keyboard there. You know, you can't have one little spongy key on one side or something like that. Ah, that'd be horrible. So, unfortunately, um, to look at the bottom, I would have to take out, drill out, cut out all of those heat stakes and pretty much ruin this pretty much, um, you know, uh, almost mint condition working HP 41 CV. I don't think I can bring myself to do it. Oh, if you really, really want me to do it, uh, leave, you know, say so in the comments. Should I go any further? Or should I... Uh, or should I respect the beauty of this HP calculator? Hmm. But I can see through the board in there, you can see like the ring 
pattern on there for the tactile dome. So you can see that, you know, this this trace over here, for example, where that it goes through that uh, via there to a pad a ring on the top side and then the tactile dome is probably uh, soldered onto the top there probably they might even be a reflowed uh, tactile dome I'm not actually sure how HP do it in this 41 CV I'm sure the uh, HP fanboys will uh, know will uh, know no doubt and they will uh, be able to provide some info because I can't find that out unless I actually butcher this thing take it all apart and uh, sacrifice it for a YouTube video. Oh no, I don't want to. I don't want to. And same thing with the LCD module down here. There's obviously something. I mean, these, these, uh, we've got uh, some pin, you know, like a little pin header here. Obviously, that looks like it's going down, soldered on either side here, soldered down to the LCD module there. And of course, there's not enough individual segments. So clearly, there's obviously uh, driver chips inside here under this sort of, yeah, that's like a ceramic or potted, uh, you know, case on top of there. So presumably there's all the driver chips in there for the individual segments and they've just got, you know, serial lines coming over here and they probably snake back to the processor somehow. So yeah, the processor is probably driving that LCD module uh, serially, I'd say. And uh, there's got to be some segment drivers under there because there's just not enough pins on this processor, of course, to drive uh, segments. It's just not going to happen. So there's some additional uh, processing or um, or at least uh, seg serial to parallel uh, segment drivers under there as part of that LCD module. And I can, you know, try and lift these tabs up, but that's not going to be of any use at all because I have to get the whole board out in order to see that. Bummer. And uh, hi, if we look carefully down the side there, you can see the traces coming out from one of the main chips under here from that uh, segment driver chip going out to the uh, segments for the LCD and you know there's probably some uh, zebra uh, strips in there to make uh, contact with the LCD glass most likely just like you're familiar with in any um, modern LCD product. So I'm sorry folks but that's all I can show you inside this classic HP 41 CV because well I respect this thing too much to pull it apart you know, destroy it to just see the lousy bottom side of the board and well that LCD driver chips probably potted anyway you'd have to uh, dissolve that away to see anything and oh, I can't bring myself to do it unless the will of the community decide that this calculator must be sacrificed for the means of getting, well, not much further information but uh, well, I hope people will vote to respect this thing just like I want to. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. That was a very brief look inside a HP 41 CV calculator. This particular one about uh, 24 years old or something. No, 26 years old or something like that. But this one dates back even further than that. Uh, originally 1979 design and people still use these today. Fantastic calculator. If you want to uh, discuss it, jump on over to the EEV blog forum. And I also have some um, high-res photos of the teardown available at uh, eevblog.com as well. So go on over to the main website to check those out. Catch you next time.